Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB, problem set 54. Uh, the problems and a playlist are in the description below. Let's take a look at the problems. Given that f of x is differentiable and has tangent line y minus four equals six, the quantity x minus one at x equals one, evaluate the limit. All right, so if we know the tangent line, we kind of automatically know two things. We know uh, it's at x equals one. So we know f of one, by just plugging one in there, we get four. We also know f prime of one has to be the slope of the tangent line. So we do know those two pieces of information. Uh, I think what we're gonna end up doing is L'Hopital's on this, right? Like you basically plug in one, you get uh, f of one is four squared is 16 minus 16 is zero, and then one minus one is zero. Are we allowed to do that? Well, I think maybe, it just depends on what level you need to do the problem on. Um, the function itself is continuous because the function is differentiable. And if a function is continuous, then the limit equals the value of the function. I don't know that we would need to show this, but sometimes on the free response questions, you do need to establish this. Basically, if you're told that a function is differentiable, you should establish that it's continuous, and then you would know that the value of the function equals the limit. I recommend you do that. That's like the safest thing to do. So once I've done that, now I'm just in like the standard L'Hopital's type of thing. So I'm gonna do uh, the limit of the numerator equals the limit of the denominator equals zero. Therefore, by L'Hopital's, the original limit is equal to we apply L'Hopital's, derivative of the top is going to be uh, two times f times f prime. And then the derivative of the bottom is just one. That happens a lot, actually, with L'Hopital's problems. Um, and now I'm just gonna substitute in. Uh, so I will get two times f of one is four, f prime of one is six, so 24 times two, so 48. And that's the problem. So I don't know, uh, it depends on like, how far into learning you are, I guess maybe you should learn it from day one. Um, but that differentiable implies con, con, differentiable implies continuous and continuous means the limit equals the value of the function might be a key step, especially on problems where like you're, you're kind of, you're not given the actual function to find the limit of, it's just like kind of implied like this f of x squared minus 16 thing might require that extra step. So be aware of it, practice it, kind of make it a thing you do on these problems. All right, next up. Find the horizontal asymptote of y equals seven minus two to the x over two to the x plus six. Go, so we have to go to infinity and negative infinity. This is not a rational function. It's not a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So you gotta consider both cases. Going to infinity is, uh, I don't know, maybe arguably easier. So our original limit, I'm gonna divide everything I see by the highest powered thing in the denominator, which is two to the x. So I get seven over two to the x minus one over one plus six over two to the x. If x then goes to infinity, uh, we just get negative one because seven over two to the x goes to zero, six over two to the x goes to zero. Negative one is all that's left. So we definitely know y equals negative one is a horizontal asymptote. Now to negative infinity, I always do, um, well, not always. I often do this problem by just considering the graph of two to the x, right? So our graph of two to the x looks like this. From that graph, you can definitely see that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of two to the x is just zero, right? So if that's the case, then the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the thing we are given, seven doesn't care, you get zero, um, and then six doesn't care, right? There's no x's, so x can do whatever it wants. So we just get seven, six, which means y equals seven over six is our horizontal asymptote. If you don't like that, there's an alternative way you can do it, and it involves this substitution. Let's let x equal negative u. Now what happens? If x is negative u, then as x goes to negative infinity, u is going to approach negative negative infinity, it's gonna approach infinity. Um, so then once that happens, we can rewrite our limit that we were given as the limit as u approaches infinity, seven minus uh, two to the negative u over two to the negative u plus six. This can be rewritten as the limit as u approaches infinity, seven, oh, uh, what am I reading? Seven minus one over two to the u over one over two to the u plus six, all of this is just sounding like made up in my head right now because I'm saying you so much, I think. Um, but you still get seven, six. Either way, I just wanted to show you both ways because I do think that's a very interesting approach to that problem and useful. And especially if you have a teacher who's like, no, you must show a mathematical argument of some sort. That's a pretty good mathematical argument. I also think the graph is a, a really valid mathematical argument, but you never know what you're gonna run into. All right, so for three. Use a graph to evaluate the integral from negative two to two of the absolute value of x minus one dx. As soon as I see that absolute value of a linear thing, I'm thinking I should graph it and add up some triangles. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. The important places are at uh, 
negative two at one and at two. So negative two and two are the bounds, and then one is the zero of the absolute value thing. Um, so at negative two, you get positive three, because negative two minus one is negative three, but absolute value. At positive two, you get one, so let's graph some stuff. So we had our points, and then here. So these are just triangles. So this is just graph for me, so I'm not like labeling everything. Um, that's a triangle that's three by three. Well, it's three by three square, and then we want half of it. And then you have a, point five, a one by one square, but you want half of it. So 4.5 and 0.5, add those together, you get five. There you go. That's the entire problem set. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.